Dharma body is the transformation body. As a result of the knowledge of achieving the task, Tathagatas manifest through transformation innumerable transformation bodies and dwell in pure and impure lands in accordance with the species of being. For hosts of bodhisattvas who have not yet entered the ten stages, followers of the two vehicles, and ordinary people, taking into account their capacities, they display supernatural powers, preach the Dharma, and cause each to secure things that are beneficial and pleasing. As for the five dharmas i.e., realm of the Dharma and the four knowledges comprising the three bodies, there is an interpretation that the first two i.e., the realm of the Dharma and the great mirror knowledge comprise the essential body, because the Buddha Bhimi Sitra says that true suchness is the Dharma body. A treatise says that one acquires the essential body by transmuting the alaya consciousness, and the class of perfect mirror knowledge transmutes the store consciousness so that the essential body is realized. The middle two knowledges i.e., knowledge of sameness and knowledge of wonderful observation comprise the body of enjoyment, because it is said that knowledge of sameness in a perfectly pure land manifests a body of a Buddha for bodhisattvas, and because it is said that in the great assemblies of bodhisattvas, knowledge of wonderful observation preaches the Dharma, eliminates doubts, and displays mastery, and because it is said that by transmuting the evolving consciousnesses, the body of enjoyment is acquired. The last class of knowledge comprises the transformation body, because it is said that in lands in the ten directions, knowledge of achieving the task manifests countless, unimaginable transformations. Also, the excellence of knowledge comprises the three bodies, and therefore we know that the three bodies are wholly made up of real knowledge. According to another interpretation, the first dharma of the five comprises the essential body, because it is said that the essential body is essentially eternal, because it is said that the dharma body of a Buddha is devoid of origination and cessation, and because it is said that it is acquired by means of causes for its realization but not by causes that produce it, and also because it is said that the dharma body is possessed in common by all Buddhas, is omnipresent in all dharmas, like space, is devoid of characteristics, is unconditioned, and is neither form nor mind. However, when it is said that it is acquired by the transmutation of store consciousness, it means that it is revealed when the coarseness of the two obstacles in the eighth consciousness is transmuted and destroyed. When it is said that the Dharma body comprises the excellence of knowledge, this is because that body is its support and real nature, and because even though the essential Dharma body is endowed with real, countless qualities, still it is unconditioned. One cannot say that it is such things as form, mind, etc. The real qualities of the four knowledges and the eternal, omnipresent material body generated by mirror knowledge comprise the body of personal enjoyment. The Buddha body manifested by the knowledge of sameness comprises the body of enjoyment for others. The numerous characteristics of bodies manifested by knowledge of achieving the task in accordance with species comprise the transformation body. It is said in the Mahayana Satra Lamkara that perfect mirror knowledge is the Buddha as body of enjoyment, because one acquires the body of enjoyment by transmuting the evolving consciousnesses. Even though it is also acquired by transmuting the store consciousness, still the Mahayana Sitra Lamkara says that the Dharma body is revealed by its transmutation and therefore does not mention acquiring the body of enjoyment in its abbreviated discussion. It is also said that the Dharma body is devoid of generation and cessation, only acquired through causes for its realization, neither form nor mind, etc. The class of perfect mirror knowledge is opposed to this. If that knowledge is not affiliated with the body of enjoyment, to what body does it belong? Also, the body of enjoyment includes the special, conditioned, real qualities of the Buddha, and therefore the four classes of knowledge and really existing form and mind are wholly included in the body of enjoyment. Also, the body of enjoyment for others and the transformation body are only revealed in order to convert others, and therefore it cannot be said that real knowledge is their substance. Even though it is said that the transformation body consists of the excellence of knowledge, nevertheless it only appears resembling no edge or is generated by knowledge, and is thus metaphorically referred to as knowledge, but its substance is not really knowledge. It is said only that the knowledge of sameness and achieving the task are able to manifest respectively the body of enjoyment for others and the transformation body with its three actions of body, speech, and mind, but it is not said that these two bodies are the same as the two knowledges. Therefore these two knowledges are included in the body of personal enjoyment. Indeed, 
even though the transformation body and body of enjoyment for others are devoid of real mind and mental activities, nevertheless there are minds and mental activities that are manifested through transformation. The spiritual powers of one who is supremely awakened are unimaginable, and therefore one is capable of revealing formless and substanceless dermas through transformation. If this were not so, how could a Tathagata manifest craving, hatred, etc., since he has eliminated them long ago? How could disciples and animals know the thoughts of a Tathagata, since the real thoughts of a Tathagata are unknown even by bodhisattvas who are perfectly awakened? Consequently, a scripture says that a Tathagata creates innumerable species of beings and all are given minds. It is also said that a Tathagata's knowledge of achieving the task creates the three actions of body, speech, and mind. It is also said that the transformation created by the Tathagata has a mind that is dependent on others, because a seen part of consciousness appears that is dependent on another real mind. Even though it is said that transformations are devoid of organs, mind, etc., still this refers to transformations by others, not to those of Tathagatas. Also, they are not said to have organs, etc. because the dermas of material organs, mind, and mental functions of creations are devoid of the functioning of organs, etc. Thus even though the three bodies are all endowed with boundless qualities, still each is different, that is, the essential body only possesses unconditioned qualities that are real, eternal, blissful, personal, pure, apart from all defilements, and they are the support of the good, without the difference of characteristics and functions of form, mind, etc. The body of personal enjoyment is endowed with countless kinds of real qualities, of subtle form and mind, etc. As for the body of enjoyment for others and the transformation body, they only possess limitless apparitional qualities that resemble form, mind, etc., along with the function of benefiting and gladdening others. Also, the essential body is properly categorized as for self-benefit, because it is peaceful, blissful, undisturbed, and inactive, but at the same time, it is the dominant condition for the benefiting of others, because it causes sentient beings to acquire benefit and gladness. It is also the support of the body of enjoyment and the transformation body and therefore includes both kinds of benefit i.e., for oneself and for others. The body of personal enjoyment has to do exclusively with self-benefit, while the body of enjoyment for others and the transformation body only have to do with the benefit of others, because they are revealed for others. Also, the essential body is supported by the land of the Dharma nature. Even though there is no distinction between body and land as far as substance is concerned, nevertheless they are related to the Buddha and the Dharma respectively, because nature and characteristics differ. Neither this Buddha nor this land is categorized as form, and even though it cannot be said that they are large or small, they are boundless, in accordance with the characteristics of their office, pervading all places like space. The body of enjoyment is in effect its own land and is supported by it in effect being the same. That is, pure consciousness associated with perfect mirror knowledge, the maturation of causes for a pure, totally immaculate land resulting from practices of self-benefit cultivated in former times, transforms into a pure, totally immaculate land that continues from the first achievement of Buddhahood into the future, adorned with entirely perfect, limitless masses of jewels. The body of personal enjoyment is supported by it eternally and abides there. The dimensions of this body are the same as those of the pure land. Each of the 32 fundamental marks and 80 secondary marks on the body is limitless, because it originates from unlimited roots of good. Since the qualities and knowledge are not material dermas, even though it can be said that they are large or small in size, nevertheless those qualities that are realized by the support i.e., the body and the body that supports them can be said to extend everywhere. The body of enjoyment for others is also supported by its pure land. That is, knowledge of sameness, the maturation of causes for a pure, totally immaculate land by virtue of the power of great mercy and compassion and resulting from benefiting others cultivated in former times, transforms into a pure land in accordance with the dispositions of bodhisattvas on the ten stages, and it may be small or large, inferior or superior, and evolves over time. The body of enjoyment for others is supported by it and abides there. The size of the support and body are also indeterminate. The transformation body is supported by a land of transformation. 
that is, knowledge of achieving the task, the maturation of causes for a pure, totally immaculate or defiled land by virtue of the power of great mercy and compassion and resulting from benefit to others cultivated in former times, transforms into a Buddha land in accordance with the needs of sentient beings who have not yet entered the ten stages, and it may be pure or defiled, small or large, and it evolves in time. The transformation body of the Buddha is supported by it and abides there. The size of the support and body are also indeterminate. The essential body and its lands are realized identically by all Tathagatas and therefore are in substance devoid of distinction. Even though the body of personal enjoyment and its supporting land are transformations of each Buddha and are not identical, nevertheless all are limitless, without obstructing each other. The remaining two bodies and lands may be common or uncommon to beings to be converted by various Tathagatas. When they are common to those to be converted, various Buddhas each transform as a body and land at the same time and place. The shapes of bodies and lands resemble each other but do not obstruct each other. They develop in concert as the dominant condition that causes the being to be converted to manifest a transformation body from his own consciousness. That is, in one land there is a single Buddha body in order to manifest spiritual powers and preach the benefit of the Dharma for him. When bodies, etc. are uncommon, only one Buddha transforms a body in a land. It has been the nature of things from beginningless time that all sentient beings are related to Buddhas by disposition. Either many are related to one Buddha or one is related to many. Therefore there is common and uncommon relative to beings to be converted. Otherwise, there would be no benefit in many Buddhas abiding in the world for a long time in toilsome labor, because one Buddha could convert all beings. These bodies and lands, pure and soiled, manifested from the transformation of a pure consciousness, are, like that transforming consciousness, both good and pure, because that which is born of totally good, pure causes is included in the truth of the path, not in the truths of suffering and cause. The aggregates, etc., as images of consciousness, are not necessarily all identical, because the three dermas i.e., aggregates, sense bases, and sense fields are born of a mixture of causes. Bodies and lands manifested from the transformation of an impure consciousness are, like the transforming consciousness, all impure, because that which is born of an impure cause is included in the truths of suffering and cause, not in path or cessation. The images of a consciousness that is good, etc., are not necessarily the same i.e., good, etc., because the three moral natures are born of a mixture of causes, and the identity or difference of aggregates, etc., should be similarly understood, otherwise, there would be no five aggregates, twelve sense bases, etc.